Today on the workbench, we have the Philco T66 made in the United States of America in 1965. It was described as graveyard dead. Okay then, let's give it some power and see what's going on. Maybe we can bring another piece of history back to life. I don't hear much. Well, not graveyard dead, but it doesn't sound too good. Let's replace the caps and see if that improves things. Got it apart. I was able to find the Sam's photo fact for this radio, and in it is the information on the electrolytic caps. There's just two of them, so that should be easy. Let's get it going. These are both axial caps, which are hard to find these days. So we use radio caps and a little heat shrink tubing, and that should work out just fine. I'm gonna mark where I think the um, desoldering goes. I think this will make it a little easier because this I can see basically where it goes. This way I won't have to keep switching it back and forth so quite so many times. That looks right. So let's get going. and it fell right out. 100 microfarads. Before I replace this, I think it'd be better to take out the 10 because it's underneath it. So I'd like to swap that out first. So again, let's do the same exercise where we mark where it goes and the other side is right here. We got him too. Something I'm always so curious about is what values did we actually pull out of here? This is the 10 we just pulled out. And it is toast. That could be our problem. And how about the 100 we pulled out? This one doesn't look too good either. Let's talk a little bit about what this ESR measurement means on the meter. It stands for Equivalent Series Resistance, and it's measuring the internal resistance of the capacitor. Every capacitor isn't just a perfect capacitor. It's a perfect capacitor with a tiny resistor connected in series with it. In a perfect world, that internal resistance would be zero, and it is close to zero on new capacitors. But as the liquid electrolyte inside dries up over time, the ESR rises and can cause the capacitor to fail even when it's still measuring the correct capacitance on the meter. The liquid electrolyte in these capacitors were never designed to last more than 20 or 30 years. There are no good electrolytic capacitors after 60 years, only how bad. So you don't really need to measure them like I'm doing. I'm just having fun. You should replace them all no matter what. Okay, let's get back to the repair and get the new ones in. You know, I'm gonna put a little bit of putty here to help hold that in place. Now let's get the 100 in place. 
That's going to be a little bit trickier because we're going to have to use some heat shrink tubing uh, so that we don't touch any other wires. That won't be too hard. Again, these uh, this is a radio cap um, when they both leads come out the same end. And um, we're replacing what was axial caps where the leads come out either end. So a little heat shrink tubing should fix that. Remember, the short lead is always negative. The long lead is positive. There he is. Well, the very stiff battery wire kept breaking off. So let's put on a new, way more flexible one. It's a tight fit in there, and I'm not interested in melting things I don't want to melt. So let's add some Captain tape, protect things a little bit. This is very dirty. Let's sand it. And then a little 99% alcohol. I think that worked. This case has a crack in it, so let's clean it and then add a tiny drop of super glue to stop the crack from getting worse. Super dirty. Let's get it cleaned up. All right, let's get it back together. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe. I'll be making more. And if you see anything I missed, again, please leave a comment. I'm here to learn. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.